I think the key attributes are that he must be a person of integrity, he must have a commitment to corporate governance, and if he has a strong understanding, that permeates through the board. I also believe that he has to have all of the interests of the shareholders you know, in mind, that includes majority and minority shareholders, and, um, and also he needs to have a good support network to obviously help him bring out the qualities in himself and others around him. We have an expression in the West that we use, which is nose in, hands out. Um, and that essentially translates um, for me and the way that others understand this is that the chairman should be a strong character, somebody who supports the CEO, but allows him to develop and gives him room and this empowers him. And I think these are the important qualities because, you know, you've hired the CEO to basically, you know, come in and give us the benefit of his ideas and his experience. And he should be able to flourish in that environment under the guidance and vision of the chairman and the board of directors. I think the first is that you have to understand the composition of the board. In terms of that we mean, you know, does it have gender diversity, does it have national diversity, does it have age diversity, and the overriding thing above all of those is expertise in its various areas. If you have knowledgeable, knowledgeable people, they will understand what you know what their functions are and they will be able to basically you know contribute something unique to the board and this is essential the other thing is if they if they are educated and trained to understand what their duties are what their fiduciary duties are what their other obligations are both ethical legal etc this won't allow a board to dysfunction I think there's other things that could um, help assist the board and these are strong committees you know if you have the composition of committees that require a board to function well the board audit committee is a very important committee in that regard. You know, any irregularities, any sort of other business that, you know, this is a good check and balance system that would allow a board to function well. The other thing is it needs a good support, a strong support network. For a board to function well, the materials must be correct. They must be distributed on time so people are prepared, well prepared for a board so everything runs smoothly and management get the guidance that they need. I think that they need to have independence, um, they need to have integrity, they need to understand uh, the effect of corporate governance and their impact on the decisions that they take. They also need to balance the interest of all shareholders, minority and majority. And they all have to understand that they have to bring something unique to the board. They must be there for a reason and to contribute, you know, they must offer valuable contributions to the board. I think you recognise a good board. I think the first thing that I would look at is the chairman. You know, you would look at his commitment, um, him as a character, his commitment to corporate governance. You would look at the same across the board. You would also look at the diversity, the skill sets that they have, the industry and the sector that they're supposed to be serving and what everyone is adding. I don't think that any foreign entity or corporation, you know, would would sort of participate in this unless there was an established legal regulatory framework out there. You know, so there was, um, you know, there were laws and regulations to protect shareholders. I think um, it's very key when I think the foreign entities would be the minority shareholders vis-a-vis -vis the Saudi shareholders. So the adequate protections, etc., would need to be in place there. Well, I can speak from the perspective of Bahrain. Um, within Bahrain, the Central Bank of Bahrain and the Ministry of Industry and Commerce have helped to formulate the Corporate Governance Code, and they also measure compliance to this code. Uh, they could, you know, I think that regulators have a very important role. They could prescribe more, you know, in depth the criteria for board directors, um, the composition of a board. 
they could also specify in detail you know that any type of training or certification which is mandatory for them and um, perhaps the institutions that they require them to to assure quality so i think overall they have a very big role to play in various aspects here um i think for me the first thing i would look at is the board as a whole you would look at the chairman you again would look at him as a personal character you would look at his um, commitment to corporate governance you would look at the board's uh, commitment to corporate governance you would look at the committees that they hold who are leading these committees you would understand you know what ethics and what rules they're abiding by if they were listed that should give you extra comfort because they have to you know obviously satisfy a number of criteria I think also you have to look at this from your perspective is that before you joined a board you would have to assess what your conflicts of interest may be and what you could offer the board um because I think you know generally people are competent to a sense but it's when you mix those people together for the relevant sector industry sector so you have to have quite a holistic approach of this but I think the key thing would be the commitment to corporate governance and the interests of you know um whether the people there are representing the interests of all shareholders majority or minority Thank you.